All right, so right now, what's happening is Mr. Ernest has tied the string down and he is practically, I don't know if you could tell, but if you see on the strings, there is a leveling tool. Now, these leveling tools aren't that much money, so you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to worry about spend or if you just have it in your collection the leveling tool is necessary because what's going to happen later on in this video is you're going to see him patting down the dirt and the sand um to try to touch the tips to try to touch that that string to ensure that it's level so right now all you're seeing is string being attached to stakes in my backyard So my backyard was very wavy. Um, you know, you, you can't eyeball it. You just kind of have to go out there and level it yourself. So what you're seeing here is my wife and Mr. Ernest um, taking some dirt out of that middle section to um, place on the outer section where um, it, it needs the extra dirt to, you know, to, to one, save on a little money so that we don't have to purchase all the dirt again. Um, but also just to make sure that it's as level as possible. That's the main goal here. Um, so yeah, there was a little labor. I, I hate that they had to do this part, but um, it was just an idea that Mr. Ernest came up with and I think it turned out to be good. So um, <laughs> poor wifey right there, Lord. I, I, I felt so bad, but I, I just thank God that I had to help need it to just be able to sit and watch something so great as this floor being this ground being leveled out um and it you know being done by other people from my backyard i'm so blessed this part is still we're still leveling um you know we've used a mixture of sand and dirt i want it to be more dirt than sand because i really didn't want that sand to get all over the place so we use the mixture of sand and dirt and um, that's what you're seeing here uh, here once again we're just patting the ground down making sure that we're getting as a level of a surface as we can that tool right there is probably about 40 to 60 dollars so if you're planning on doing this just know that hey you've really got to do your homework because 40 dollar tool for that padding tool is absurd to me so that was Mr. Ernest's. Thank God he's built a, a a large range of tools in his lifetime. So I'm trying to get there. Maybe I'll purchase that $40 tool try. one day. Or maybe I'll just keep depending on helpful, supportive neighbors um, to always have my back when I need it the most. So. Oh, yeah. That, we all are getting baptized. And, and can we even swim, swim in it for fun? Nearing the end of the leveling process, um, it's become a lot more level. Uh, this is to the side of my house in the backyard, to the left side of the house. And so um, we've pulled the topsoil out um, and we've pulled the sandbags out and we're ready to begin leveling now. I've seen in other videos people saying, don't buy the bags of sand and dirt. Well, I've got a very narrow entrance to my backyard and Purchasing rock or sand or even dirt for that matter would have been hard to wheelbarrow up my, it's not the steepest slope, but I do have a little slope it, it, into my backyard. Then on top of that, my narrow entrance, I just have a regular entrance to my backyard. And so buying bags was the most efficient for me. Um, yeah, I may have, you know, spent a few dollars more, but 
it, it got done. Uh, we got about 30 bags of dirt and probably about 20 bags of sand. You know, it, it came out to about, about 50 bags or so. Uh, more dirt than sand. Like I say, I wanted it to be more dirt. Um, but we did use sand as well just to give it some, um, just to fill in the divots and make sure that it was as sturdy as possible. We're down here in Texas, so the the ground does move a lot um, and it gets very hot down here. And so it gets, it goes very dry. Then, you know, it, it gets extremely dry and then, you know, so I just wanted this level to be a lot more compact than normal. So I had Mr. Ernest um, come in and, and deliver some topsoil and some sand. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we're just raking and just trying to get it as level as possible. Those strings are pretty sturdy. And if, you, if you've got string and stakes, um, I really would challenge you to use it. Um, that two by four that you've seen, um, that two by four that you're seeing right now, it's, it's being used with a level and that's what's telling us uh, how the ground is being leveled. So that yellow part is a leveler. You can get them um, at your local hardware store and um, it's leveling the dirt and it's making sure that and it's telling us that, hey, that yes, you're still level, you're still level. So that's the cool part about this process is once you get to scraping it with that two by four it really makes it kind it makes it look pretty for one but ultimately what you're doing is you're scraping off all that extra debris and uh making sure that it's where you want it to be as far as the leveling goes This was probably the most labor intensive, and that was getting the bags from the car to the backyard. Uh, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 11 bags of topsoil are in this shot. Like I say, at the end, we ended up getting about a total of 50 um, topsoil bags and sand. coming to an end um mr ernest decided to put the sand on top of the dirt which was pretty cool too so um that did help as far as leveling goes it it went right into all the little dips in the in the ground so the sand really closes those gaps that's that's the useful part that's the useful part of the sand is knowing that it's it'll fill in really good um those are 50 pound bags just regular all-purpose sand and uh yeah we're coming to an end when it comes to leveling but we didn't stop with just pouring the topsoil and the sand down we also um got some more for you as you can see over there this the the foam boards and then even before the foam boards we're going to lay this overlayment here which you'll see in the next shot This overlayment is a, a plastic overlayment. It's not the cloth. I, I had cloth in my shed and I was going to use it, but Mr. Yeah. Ernest really suggested us using this plastic overlayment. Um, it, it's used for gardening purposes, you know, landscaping purposes. So this really helps out down in Texas where the weeds could get very hectic. And so what you're seeing is uh, Mr. Ernest just practically laying it out. And, and putting uh, metal stakes through it to keep it sturdy. Um, so pretty straightforward process. It will help with the weeds. The sand and the dirt are gonna be, you know, weed protection in and of itself, but this plastic really solidifies us having a strong weed protection. And then as you've seen in the other shot, um, that uh, foam board is coming down. Paper, so uh, I was? highly doubt any weeds are gonna get through Six this. Mil. And if they do, They've got a lot to go through in that heavy pool, so I highly doubt it's coming. And now for the fun part, 
gluing and taping the styrofoam boards down. I got this idea from a few YouTube uh, channels that I've n now subscribed to. But essentially they got some regular XPS board. I think what we have here is like a version of it. It's like, I forget the name. Is it like EPS uh, Formular Board? But uh, it, it was the $18 foam board. Uh, well, this says NGX. So initially I wanted XPX. I'm not sure the difference. Some of you uh, contractors out there have to help me with that part. But uh, this should be pretty water repellent. And also it shouldn't be, it shouldn't disintegrate while sitting underneath the pool. So it was, it, this uh, foam board is half inch, four by eight foam board. Say that again. Foam boards. And so we purchased eight of them for our 14 foot and diameter pool. down to the last stretch we got about two more foam boards to go and uh of course the family is very anxious uh to hop in this pool unfortunately it's very windy and a little cold out here so uh we aren't going to be swimming in the next few days but hopefully this texas heat kicks in so i've never asked for the texas heat to come but uh here we are begging for the texas heat to come so we can hop in this pool come on let's go sit Come on, go. Okay. All right, foundation is done, leveling is done, and now it's time to assemble the pool. Once again, as you're seeing, <laughs> I've got wifey helping me and uh, you'll even see a shot here soon of myself trying to limp and put this pool together but we put it together and I'm super excited so um, you see us using our fingers because there are large images of not using box cutters for this box so instantly i told court i was like we're not going to use any knives to open this box and surely we didn't we just ripped the tape off the sides of the seams and uh opened the box up with our hands because we've seen this big old image saying don't use box cutters so i'd imagine they said that because you don't want to puncture the filter of this pool right like um you, you know it is plastic it's it's a heavy plastic but um it's plastic and so any punctures are will will lead to leaks and it's just not something you want so here you see i'm on my knees hands and knees because i've got a ripped achilles tendon and um i just can't give much power to my legs so but i'm still determined to get this pull up because we've got many things we need to do with it baptisms being one and uh, just enjoying time with family being the other, so. So a few things you want to keep in mind, especially when you first take out all the parts from the box, you're going to have two sets of beams. You're going to have one horizontal beam, which is this one, um, and then one vertical leg, which for our purposes came in a yellow plastic. So the differences between the two, the horizontal beam, which was marked two or four, you remember? Um, it, there's going to be, just read the, the, the just, name itself. It says horizontal. And, and the horizontal beam is going to be the one that lays over the th th that's going to be threaded through the top. The vertical beam is going to be the one which is the longer one, as you can see, which is going to be the actual vertical leg that stands the pool up. So, all right, the pool is up, and as you can see, there are a few wrinkles. Um, so 
I'm gonna try to let it air out and I'm gonna go mess with the filter. So it's pretty straightforward. One thing I will say is it, it is easy to put up. You just gotta get into a groove, right? Once you figure out the horizontal beams and the vertical legs, once you figure that part out, you're gonna get into this groove and then it's gonna be smooth sailing from there. Key is you're not trying to rush this because especially if the, especially if you plan on keeping it up year round, you really don't want to rush this. You want to make sure you got your your leveling done the right way. I used dirt and a little sand, and then I used some styrofoam board, and then obviously it came with that um, uh, that she some uh, an overlay <laughs> tarp, excuse me, and then um, that is your vertical leg. If it's anything like mine, it's going to come in a yellow packaging, and then that is your horizontal beam. Um, this is the joint that it's going to come in. I mean, it's all snap. It's all snap. You snap it in place, as you can see. Everything's being snapped in place. So, um, you just got to fill it up, and what? I'm going to let it air out to get these wrinkles out. I, I've been going around it. And just pulling the legs out, letting it, you know, get the wrinkles out as best as it can. It's very windy right now, so that kind of helps. I mean, it wasn't helping me for anything else, but hopefully that helps in getting these wrinkles out. And I'm just coming by and I'm just popping the legs out. Uh, probably need to pop the legs out on the other side so I don't go past the tarp. But yeah, um, pretty straightforward. I have the Ultra XTR 14 foot. By 42 inch I have a three and a seven year old so um, you know I didn't want anything too too deep um, since you know my backyards decent size and you know sometimes the kids are outside when I'm not looking and yes this does come with a cover which is right there um, however you know I didn't want anything too deep and plus this is my first pool so I wanted to get something that I would be able to maintain um, and something that, you know, would be like one of my projects that I continue to do year round. So this will be up year round. I don't plan on taking it down. I've heard great reviews of keeping these Intex pools up year round. So um, be wishing for the best for me. Be careful with that soaker hose, it's fragile. I already broke one. Alright, pool is finalized. What you think? I don't know what's up with this leg right here, but I mean, it's good, but it's kind of, I know it's holding a lot of pressure and not sure why, as you can see. So, I'll figure that one out. The rest of the legs look good, so. Um, yeah. Let me give you the exact name of this filter. It's the uh, Intex. Oh Lord, it doesn't have it on here. Oh well, as you can see, filter's good. Hope I got the pipes the right way. Somebody in the comments correct me if they're wrong. So I got the out going to the out. I got the two ends connect to the motor all right and then 
mine didn't come with the drain hose so not quite sure what that's about but anyways yeah took two days to lay the foundation to put this pool together so yeah this is it This is an Intex 14 foot by 42 inch pool. Decent size for my backyard. All right, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section and I'll do my best to help. I did all this with a lot of help from other people because my Achilles was torn so um shout out to all the people that helped me hope you find this video helpful and uh until next time